Hey, what's going on? Luke here. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the huge injury toll in the NRL currently and the possibility of bringing in an 18th man to cover any of those injuries that are happening midway through the games. Because quite frankly, there's a lot that's happening. Uh, I just went and did my review yesterday where I went through all the games and every single game I was talking about someone who was having a major, major injury plus all the other injuries and there was a lot of games where teams were having no players on the bench or having one player on the bench and it was happening pretty early into the game as well. Now the first one we're going to be talking about is the Roosters. Obviously they had both the halves go off injured um, they also had uh, Lindsay Collins go off injured as well so there's three players you're down to a one man bench. Also adding the players that they had were also their halves too so immediately there you have a team who's never going to win with that amount of injury toll uh, unless they're already up by like 30 or 40 at this point um, but just with all those injuries your team's never going to win uh, unless you're actually playing probably like the wooden spoon team but they're taking on the Rabbitohs so it was definitely not going to happen let's just let's not talk about the fact that they were already going to lose at this point um, the Rabbitohs were absolutely outstanding at the night but um, you just talk about any team in general if they get to the point where they have no bench it's always talked about as being one of the best victories of the season or if they lose it was such a valiant effort and I think that proves the point in how tough it is to actually win a game with no bench or just one player left on the bench it doesn't really happen that often uh, but all of a sudden with all the new rule changes it is happening often, like we just go through some other games too. So the Sharks game, the Sharks ended up with no bench, I think no bench, or they had one player left on the bench. Also for the Eels, Mitchell Moses had to go off very early on, he got three fancy team points for me, absolutely abysmal, um, but he had to go off early due to a head injury, the whole concussion situation. And I think if they're going to be doing the concussion stuff, and if they're going to be taking it seriously, I think that they 100% need to bring in a rule where an 18th man can come into play. Um, if there's going to be head knocks, like you've, you've got to do something about it, because there are things that are just going to happen in the the game and the things that are ne inevitable in the game there's going to be head clashes just players getting their heads in the wrong position it's bound to happen at some point and if teams going to keep having you know their sub benches go down to no players I think just like everything in sport teams going to find a way to get through it and, and maybe players who should be sitting out games they're not going to sit out games all of a sudden because they don't want to let the team down they don't want to have to let the team play with 13 players instead of the 17 just little things like that uh, and I feel like it would be so beneficial for the 18th man to come into play if there's been injuries now I don't think it should be a thing where say like for the Eels if Mitchell Moses is the only guy who goes down I feel like that's just shit happens that shit happens all the time Your team should have to deal with it they should be good enough to come up with a solution on the fly and deal with it it's times like the shark situation where they have literally no bench got the roosters as well actually the biggest one was probably the Raiders because within the first 15 minutes they were down to one player on the bench and it was a hookup so like it didn't really work out well for them and they got out to a big lead against the Warriors and in a surprise twist the Warriors came out of nowhere after being down by like 20 odd points with like 20 minutes to go or whatever came back and won the game and surprise surprise it was in the dying moments that they won the game too uh, where teams would be super fatigued where your teams would be the most tired and the Raiders they just fell away uh, and obviously they got some bad calls go against them as well which just added to it but they fell away big time and teams are already falling away due to the new rule changes and how fast the game is and, and for all the talk about how the game's faster and how the game's better I don't think it's the case because we're seeing teams not being able to play and not being able to compete very early on into games because they're, they're missing their best player or they're coming up to half time and they don't even have any players left on the bench and this isn't just like a single occurrence in previous seasons you know this stuff would happen throughout the season but it wasn't happening in like I'm going to say over half the games because that's what it felt like in this one. There was a lot of head knocks and there were also a lot of just injuries in general. And you can watch this video and you can sit here and you can disagree with me and you can argue the fact that this would happen regardless. It's not necessarily to blame on the game being sped up. But with the game being sped up, players are getting more tired, which means they're going to be making some more sloppy tackles, getting their heads in the wrong spots. Um, also, you're going to have players who are just under general stress and duress on their body because their bodies are like I said, bloody tired. They're more tired than what they normally would be. And they're playing a super physical game. So when, say, Luke Keery goes down on his knee, it's not necessarily an injury in terms of the game being sped up and him being tired. But at the same time, all the stress, all your joints and that, and then your body's tired, your muscles are tired, and then you go to try and change directions. Surely that can't be a good thing for the body. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it, all the talk was about speeding up the game and how it's going to affect uh, the big boppers and the little guys are going to go through and, and take advantage of it. And I don't think it's necessarily happening. All I'm finding is the little fellas are getting more concussed and getting more injured. That, that's literally what it seems like to me. Now, in terms of this 18th man rule, I haven't really thought about it too much in, in terms of how it's actually going to be implemented. And I'm assuming the NRL are going to be doing that. They've got to at least consider it. They've got to do something. And I think if they were to just look over this one, I think it'd be a really bad look for the game, especially with the media really getting behind this one. So I think they've at least got to consider it. I'm not expecting it to be there next week by any means, but 
by the end of the season, I'd really love to see it happen. Um, and whether it's just a reserve grade guy, another 20s guy, I don't know exactly how they're going to do this. If it's going to be a, a first team player, um, like who, who literally would be the 18th man normally, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, but there needs to be something just to protect the players a little bit more and, and stop players from having to play with injuries. We saw Curtis Scott play literal broken ribs because they couldn't sub him off, essentially. Um, so look, you got to take look after the players, the health and well-being of the players because they're always going to put their hand up and say, yep, they want to play. You're not really going to see players go, yep, take me off, please take me off. If they're seeing all their players go down and struggling and, and they're down no subs on the bench, they're going to look over and then they're going to say, yep, no, I just can't come off. And they're probably going to do serious damage and I don't want the NRL to have to wait until there actually is a player who has some serious damage for them to actually change things. I'd like them to be proactive rather than reactive. And I know you can argue that they, they're already being reactive in the sense that it's taken this week where all these big name players have all gone down injured and then all of a sudden the talks come about it. But look, I think it's it's better late than never. I think the 18th man needs to come in and needs to be able to play. The only thing I can see is, like I said earlier, all teams are going to take advantage of things. And whether that be guys passing their HIA and then coming back on after they've clearly been stumbling around, we've seen that happen. But they're also going to take advantage of the fact that, I don't know, if a guy's playing a shit game and they've got someone who, who can come on and be a fresh player, I'm sure teams are going to take advantage of that at some point. It's, it's bound to happen. It just always happens in, in sport. Teams are going to take advantage of it. Um, so look, I am aware that it's probably going to happen. However, I feel like this is something they need to bring in and I feel like it's going to be quite obvious if that sort of stuff happens. So if a team does do that, they need to come down on them super hard, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, the 18th man, I think it's a great idea. I think it's something that they should be doing and I think they need to implement it pretty fast. Maybe in a month or so. I mean, they're pretty fast to change all these other rules in terms of speeding up the game. So surely they can... Uh, you know, bringing these rules pretty quick in terms of helping the players a bit. Because to be quite honest with you, I'm getting sick of games being decided by who's a team at the end of the game who's got the more players who are fit. Because that's what it feels like it's coming to. And we saw with the Raiders, it, even with how good the Warriors were when they came back, they got some really dud calls, the Raiders. And also, they were just so fatigued. That was just bound to happen. Even with the lead that they had, you just knew the Warriors were going to come back at some point. You just weren't sure if they were actually going to get the win. Uh, but they got as far as they did and the Warriors ended up winning. And I feel like a lot of it was due to the fact that they had no bench, as well as the bad they had against them, but I think the biggest point is if you look at all the sides who had those big injury tolls, like Lucky like Sharks, Lucky like Raiders, Lucky like Roosters, every single one of them got beat, and I think that's the biggest telling point in all of this. But uh, yeah, that's my two cents on this subject. Leave in the comment section below. What are your thoughts? Do the NRL need to implement an 18th man rule where they can bring on an 18th man, maybe due to a HIA, maybe due to injuries in general? I'm not sure how they're going to do it, uh, but maybe leave some suggestions in the comment section below. Maybe the NRL is going to read this and they'll go, yep, that's a pretty good idea. So Feel free to go ahead and do that. Also, feel free to give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke on YT for the most part. My Facebook's just Mr. Luke, so go ahead and give me a follow and give me a like and all that sort of stuff. My Snapchat's also Mr. Luke on YT. So what's on the screen right now. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying all the content on here and in particular enjoying this video. Make sure you go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. It's important in terms of actually being notified that I've uploaded a video because we know the sub boxes are quite dodgy. So go ahead and do that. But uh, yeah, in terms of this video, that's where I'm going to end it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. See you.